He didn't get his hands on Syndra, but the LeBlanc that he also showcased is going to make an appearance. So between that and the Renekton, they could have the potential to snowball some lanes. However, this Warwick is going to need a little bit of time before it can have an effect on those. Yeah, a little bit of time in the game. This LeBlanc, though, I quite like it, although it won't necessarily be able to have lane presence too much against Febivan. You can look to go up towards topside. We talked about Renekton early game. If you can combo that with the LeBlanc, as you were talking about, the Warwick still can get into the lane early on, maybe try and get things going, because other than that, Caitlyn, Rakan, not the, the best synergy between the two. You can get the knockup into the trap, which is quite nice, but with the Tom Kench there, it just means that Zaya should be quite secure in that bottom lane. Yeah, really a combination kind of born out of the necessity to pick the Rakan away from H2K. Yeah. We'll see how it ends up working out for Team Vitality. This team really needs to build on the momentum that they've started, but H2K, they're going to be hunting, honestly, for some confidence back. It was such a hard loss at the very end of it all against Unicorns of Love. So close, but they fell short. And now, see if they take some of that frustration out against their opponents here today. Now, if you believe that is going to be the case, and H2K are gonna put the wallop on Vitality. Don't forget to hop on Twitter, at LLE Sports, hashtag H2K win. And if you believe in Team Vitality, you know which one it is, hashtag BIT win. Are they gonna show some signs of life up against H2K? You want to build those wins going into cross groups. Every single W counts. We will find out as we are heading onto Summoner's Rift. Got to see how Vitality can come out of the gates with what should be an earlier game top half of the map. That's where we want to see their focus going. We want to see whether anybody else can have success on the Warwick. Unlike uh, it just basically has been Zerse for the Unicorns of Love up until this point. And then we're carrying on the trend of the day. Will Fiora remain undefeated in Europe at seven and zero currently? Uh, Odo 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 got win in you got to you got to trust in Odo. In all honesty, but Kabushard has got something to prove on the Renekton. It's a comfortable champion for him. Both of these top laners like to play themselves some carries, but you know, we've seen drastically different career paths, uh, trajectories for the two of them over the last couple of splits. And Odo definitely rising up and has been really one of the top, top laners. Yeah, I actually think this split right now, H2K solo laners may very well be the best individual performing members. H2K's difficulties come together as team play and some decisions and fights that go against them. But I think when you look pound for pound, Febivan and Odo Amne are actually the best performing individuals in my mind. Yeah, I mean, Febivan's definitely been stepping up and, and kind of reclaiming some of his reputation as a star mid laner this split. Nuclear and Che have also done quite well, though, especially in the sure. opening weeks. And to speak on Febivan, I actually rated him coming into week one as, in my mind, beneath Exile. But I think that has drastically shifted. Now, with three weeks of play, Febivan has reasserted himself as the top mid laner in Group B. And with perks slumping and, you know, caps looking good, but still not right up there at the top, I think Febivan is poised for this to be his split to make his mark as maybe he's top mid laner. Very possible. Now, Nuke Duck is a player who's had a lot of experience as well on the Rift, and he stepped up big against the Mysterious Monkeys. But that is a different caliber of player. And something we definitely alluded to at the start of the game is <laughs> that rivalry between Yankos and Vander. And uh, he definitely fired the first shots in that one. <laughs> Yankos always one to start firing shots. The uh, Vitality crew were also talking about camping top lane a little bit here as well. It was uh, some shots back and forth on Twitter, and it, it's going to be a spicy one, you have to think. Yankos, we'll see if he gets drawn into a bit, a bit of madness when it comes to playing up against Vanda. He might just do it, but you talked about individual performance, and that might just be enough in the early game to help them out. I really want to see how the junglers differentiate the way they're going to play this one, since a lot of vision has been invested to making sure that both teams are able to keep eyes on where the junglers are. But that seems to be a bigger deal if you're trying to keep tabs on Yankos, since this guy is a madman, especially on Lee Sin. Yeah, this Lee Sin has always been a, a big pick for Yankos' early game presence. We're going to have to see if he can have any impact. But historically, this hasn't always been the most one-sided of matchups. Actually, in the spring split, if you cast your mind back, Vitality defeated H2K in a game in a stomp. Now, they did lose that series, but it was the heaviest loss for H2K in the spring split. So I wouldn't count the Vitality lineup out because this one, theoretically, is a little bit more stable with Vander in that bottom side than the, uh, the whole spring debacle. I mean, yeah, you, you talk about stability, right? I mean, when you have people <laughs> swapping in and out, Nuke Duck going into the support role and everything, and 
It was a different time for Vitality, but they are still having a rough start to this split, only picking up a win against the bottom team in their group. And you need to be able to do more than that if you want to have a chance at playoffs. Cross group's coming up. It's a whole different ball game in the next few weeks. Absolutely. And uh, one of the, the duos that I think we're going to have to keep our eyes on for the next couple of weeks that started this split at least with a bit of a bang is this bottom lane for H2K. Kind of just absorb Vander's aggressive play there. Steelback wasn't really able to punish himself. And, you know, Che with this Tom Kench, not only is it good to keep nuclear alive, difficult to harass down because the health regeneration that comes through, you've got the Doran shield on Zaya as well. So nuclear and Che aren't likely to get killed unless there's a massive all in. But speaking of all in, top side. Yeah, someone might be likely to get killed here. Kabashard, he slices, he dices. The minions are blocking the sonic wave and. It's going to be it right now. Oda Omni on half his health bar, still holding firm, but it's a 6 CS disadvantage as Yankos went in to try to look for the kill. And as long as this CS disadvantage doesn't get too great in favor of Kabushad, it's an acceptable uh, position for the Fiora to be in. We've talked about how it's going to be late game, but this would be one good way. Riposte is now down. Okay, he's got Flash. He might want to use it. Oda Omni. oh, he's so low. In comes Joko. Flash for Flash. And now Yankos is going to tag his way in. Flash for Flash had to really be traded there. There's no way Odo Amne can survive if he ends up dying here. But of course, now this is a flashless Fiora. But uh, the next time around, perhaps Vitality will be a little bit luckier on the exchange. But nevertheless, H2K looking to stabilize off their top side. Looking to build around Odo Amne. He'll be able to even up the CS difference with the amount of time and CS under the tower here. So it's not too bad of a position, but still a nice attempt by Vitality. And the early game is where Vitality have maybe been the most successful. Absolutely, they've been able to build themselves up some leads, but H2K, as long as they're able to keep denying, that's all they need to do, and that is going to be a frustrating thing if you're a con. Your gal just yeah. keeps getting swallowed up by that, that a giant is, frog monster. That is so frustrating at this point, just for Vitality in general, because every time they try and engage, you obviously have that delay between Rakan going in and the knockup actually landing. And Vitality's bottom lane, Steelback and Vanda, with so much experience in the European LCS, you would envision being a, a bot lane with a formidable. The only real success that they've been having is when they move out of the lane and go up to top lane to push towers down alongside Kaboshad. They have not really been any kind of dominant force in their group, and it's been a little bit underwhelming so far, and we want to see more from Steelback, from Vander. You're absolutely right, and this has been one of Vitality's big issues. In fact, a large amount of the team just hasn't really been performing where they've needed to be, and they've relied on the likes of Joko to do things for them in the early game, which I think is why this Warwick pick is actually so surprising, because it is a later game jungler. But I really want to see how Joko ends up performing against the likes of Yankos, because see what has been the last couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, Yankos somewhat back on form himself, not yet able to secure First Blood King for himself. Joko still has had some of the greatest impact when it comes to First Bloods for a team, but it kind of wears out after a while. And Joko, we've seen him have games where he starts two and zero on Graves, then dies five times, and Vitality as a team can't hold things together. But maybe with this Warwick paired with the LeBlanc and the Renekton, if they can get that infinite duress combo off, that might be what Vitality need to secure an early game lead against H. Yeah, you pick good targets, you're able to come up big, but that's the problem when you're dealing with the Tom Kench, is he can always deny that. It's why this pick is so powerful, negating a lot of effects of a composition that the likes of which Vitality's bringing. However, it's a very even early game. We haven't had first blood. We're at seven minutes into this one, and there's been a few close calls. No flashes on either top lane or still the mid lane matches. Oh, and Nuke Duck trying to hold Tom. Hello, Shatter Orb. That's first blood. Goodbye, Febavin. And now Yanko's tagging in up top. Odawamne was fainting on that one, but Joko is soon to arrive. He wants to go all the way in. Look for the duress. Flashes, dashes. He's there it, it goes. Two quick kills for Vitality. Can they make it three? Cabo Shard calls the Meek and gets himself another. Well, we talked about how the top half of the map in the early game should belong to Vitality. An uncharacteristic 1v1 mistake by Febavin in the mid lane leads to then two kills up on the top side for H2K. Yankos and Odo Amne just not really able to deal with this Warwick with the Renekton. Earlier, remember, Odo Amne still had no flash. This is just a misread from Feverman. Doesn't think that he's in enough danger of dying from that Shadow Roll because the chains didn't miss. It wasn't a clean 1v1, but then top side. Look at it, Kaboshad's still quite healthy after the Dominus has popped and Odo Amne, no flash. 
no repost, can't get away from Joko. Joko with the infinite duress is enough to take it down, and it's an easy kill under the tower. This is what Vitality have done in the majority of their games in the early game. This is what has got them leads, and we need to see this continue, and maybe, maybe pull out another upset this week, because we've already had quite a few. Yeah, we have, and uh, Vitality themselves, I, I would say, Looked like they could have potential to be upset, but it was hard to call against the Mysterious Monkeys. They had to have a couple mistakes go their way. But this is looking like a stronger team in the early game. Admittedly, this is the composition for it. Mm -hmm. You've got a Renekton, you've got a LeBlanc. You do have some late game insurance, though. Your Warwick and your Caitlyn, you can yeah. start to group as five and you can still make things happen. That Renekton becomes a tank. Yeah, you you can obviously have some of that late game insurance. You'd rather just snowball heavily. And uh, Nuke Duck, uh, our stats team has just passed me uh, a little tidbit that this is his ah. first solo kill of the split. So uh, right after I commend Febovan for be maybe being the best mid laner in Europe right now, Nuke Duck just walks in and solo kills him because Febovan misreads the trade. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, and this is the thing about Nuke Duck, right? Like, oh, we'll get to that in a minute because Kabushart's getting dropped on by Nuclear Che, Odawamne all under this tower. Che's gonna swallow up the Fiora. They are trying to tank the aggro. Even Yankos join the fray and they get the croc, but it was a huge investment for them. Yeah, a big investment, but at the same time, this is the type of play that HK were wanting to make with the Tom Kench. We saw the Ninjas in Pajamas do this in the Series 1 of today. Vitality will be able to react by putting their bottom lane topside to deny the tower push, but still, that's what you need. You need that kill onto Fiora. She needs to be strong enough to be able to contend against the Renekton the later this game goes. You can see Kabushad 1 versus 3, 1 versus 4 as Yankos joins in just isn't able to survive. And then there's a heal coming through from HK to keep him alive at the end of it all. But Vitality are still in the lead, and it is a significant lead at that. Yeah, it was a nice swap though for HK up towards the top side, but at the end they go back down to the bottom, and that means that Vitality are freed up to try and take out this Rift Herald. Steelback will join Vander to help finish it off. Poke the big crab in the eye. And that means we might see first Tower Blood going the way of Vitality. The gold advantage, nothing to sneeze at this early on in the game. About a thousand and some change, and that could easily get a little farther as they ping on to Oda Wamne. If Joko decides to head that way soon, we see some more action. Yeah, H2K trying to push down the bottom side as Joko picked up Rift Herald for himself. Good for H2K here. Yeah, Kabashad has to back away from the tower at this point. This is obviously reading into the fact that Vitality committed to top side on the back side of the play, and what that means is still that can't continue to push. H2K get the bottom tower. Odo Amne is safe to just farm out under his tower himself on the top side, and then H2K coming right back into the game. Yeah, that evens the gold up just after. Since Vitality were unable to get this tower up top, now you can see they're gunning for it. Joko still holding on to the Rift Herald, and Odo Amne, if he oversteps his bounds, he has got no backup just yet. Yankos looking to change that. It looks like Vitality have changed their plans. Interestingly enough, uh, Joko in this game is putting his early points maxing Q. We saw Zerse doing both E and W max yesterday uh, for some of the damage reduction, a little bit of the extra attack speed and all of that. But this is Ooh. about getting into lane. Ooh. Okay, Joko, <laughs> tongue right on there, slows him up for just a second, and Yankos is going to help Febovin finish the job, so yeah. H2K collapsing. So it's about getting into lane and then successfully being able to move around fights, but you also are a little bit easier to kill without some of the extra oh points. Boy. In damage reduction, but back. steel back, Insta trying to get away. Flash followed through. Feathers fly for nuclear, and now they swallow up steel back, and Oda Wamne gets the kill. The H2K gang squad has arrived. And this is the difference between watching NIP play with the Tom Kench in game one and now watching H2K play with it in this series is, look, it's not all about just using the Abyssal Voyage once. It's about every single time somebody on Vitality is out of position. Shay pops the ultimate, gets one person there, already making a play for the tower. And from what looked like a very serious deficit early on for H2K, they're turning this game right back around and they've got the gold lead once again. Yeah, Kabashard unable to finish off the turret. He'll finally do it after this next wave completes and the Rift Herald is going to pop. But H2K, they've definitely stepped it up in the early game after it looks like they were going to fall behind for a little bit. Vitality made some nice Whoa. moves, but it's really nice to see HDK firing back on all cylinders. No minion wave. Yeah, that's not going to finish. No wave means no way of getting the tower <laughs> behind that Orion. And I normally, see what you did there. Uh, that's the position where Rift Herald should be so strong. You should be able to get that tower, but doesn't get it on this exchange. But what we wanted to highlight 
as we come closer and closer to some of these skirmishes is how much more active H2K have been in the early game. When you look at that 15 minute mark, they have been much more, they've had a much greater emphasis on fights, on skirmishes that have been more successful. You can see their assists per game has gone way in favor of H2K considering their spring split performance. And I think what you said about efficiency is, is an important point, right? H2K have gotten better at doing this as well. They would always sometimes make plays, but it, it seemed like they would back off if it didn't quite work and they you know, kind of got wrecked a little bit. You saw at the early game here, they were losing a couple of kills, but then they just bounced right on back. And not in solo fashion, they just brought four members. This is why the Tom Kench is working so well for them right now. This is a team that in the early game definitely has coordination. And that Abyssal Voyage is available once again. So from this point, they don't necessarily have an angle on it. It is a 2v2 with the Ankos maybe able to get up behind them. But that's where you start looking at if Steelback st sits in this lane on his own and Vander recalls on a ward, that Abyssal Voyage may come out. That ward, I believe, actually spots him out. Okay. And Vanda recalled. Vanda completed that recall on a ward. Joko now dies because of it. That's exactly what we're talking about from H2K. Oh boy, the flash over is actually going to prevent his death just now. Steelback was there, but that was a lot to try and get out of it. Even had infin infinite duress onto Yankos just to make sure he wasn't going to go down that easily. It does free up the red buff to be picked up by Nuclear, and now with so much territory controlled by H2K in that jungle, where are they going to make their move next? It looks like the mid lane is the target of choice. Nuke Duck has to watch his back. Yeah, it's a move towards mid, and this makes it difficult for Nuke Duck. Oh, man, he went all in to see if he could pick off onto Fevivin, but nothing doing. Instead, he just shatter orbs and clears yep. away most of the wave. Still, some chip damage on this turret. Vitality don't have a response in lane. Nuke Duck may once again be the saving grace for Vitality for a while in this game. They need a lot more time for Steelback really to become active in this game. And that's the point I wanted to go back to about Nuke Duck, because there was a point in his career where you mm -hmm. would consider him one of, if not the best mid laner at the time in Europe. That was a long time long ago, time by the way. Ago. But I was talking about Deficio earlier on in the week, and there are times when that a glimpse of that former self starts to come out. And we saw some impressive play early on as the Shockwave mostly clears the minion waves off. Nuke Duck is definitely a player on these assassins, not afraid to go in, make the big hero play. And maybe that's what Vitality needs to get themselves back on their feet, to keep it going. It certainly worked against the Mysterious Monkeys. You see it every so often, but it's not the kind of thing that you can rely on every game, or at least in most of the games. No, you, Vitality, you gotta feed him his Weedabix first. <laughs> it doesn't work every day. But at this point, he's gonna try and show that a little bit against Oduamne on the bottom oh, side. The no, not gonna be the two on one for now. Still, you can always see he's sniffing for the play, sniffing for a chance to get his team ahead. <laughs> he's he's back bot lane again. <laughs> well, he did say, you know, I was talking to him backstage, like, I'm going to camp this bottom lane, but Vander's not here. So yep. I don't know how he feels about that. Probably fine at this point, because <laughs> he recognizes his team's ahead. Why uh -oh. did stay? Yeah, Nuke Duck, he has to burn his flash, and oh. now Nuclear's going oh. all in. They get the root, and Nuclear, with the finishing move, grabs himself a kill. Nuke Duck got nuked himself. So Nuke Duck on a mobile champion in the long lane stays because he thinks he's safe from Yankos not being there. But what has happened three times in this game already, Pyra? Uh, I'm gonna go with option number one. Che ults into the lane. Good guess. That, that You didn't need 50-50 for the friend. I'm, I'm confident. Good. I'm confident on this one. Okay. I was that's, prepping for that's that, like to be fair. The, That's like the $100 <laughs> question. That's not the million dollar All right, give me, give me the 200. I want to work my way up. Um, our H2K can get this tower. There's only two answers. Um, in two minutes. Anyways, we'll see how it goes. Fight's on right now. They get the fear off. Nuke Duck looking to try and pick a target. H2K are scattering. It's Che, the only one in range. But that's not the target they want, and his shield absorbs everything. This should, however, be Vitality's push here onto the mid lane tower. Odoamne is going to head towards the top side, or at least try to. Nuke Duck's trying to cut in from the side, so I don't think Vitality actually want to fight this, but their wave is going to die very quickly with the Zaya here. Shockwave. Shock wave. That finishes off the minion wave. That's the second time we've seen Febivin do that in this mid lane. They are really trying to hold mm -hmm. on to the tower lead they have. It's very slim in the gold advantage. And remember, with Rift Herald already having been used in this game, um, there's no easy option for Vitality to just push through the mid lane. 
they have to kind of fight with H2K for it. So even if you are throwing out Shockwave every now and again, Nuclear has Wave Clear in the mid lane when Orianna isn't available. And then Shockwave is only a short cooldown, comes back up and you can get rid of the minions again. Yeah, that's a good point, really. There's not a whole lot they can do now. They are still taking pot shots at it time and again, but you can see Nuclear was there to clear it away. Vitality do have some vision that they've managed to extend a little bit of the way into the H2K jungle, but not enough of it in. And here is where Nuke Duck gets deleted. Yeah, the thing is, he needed to be running way earlier. Nice flash during the Feather Storm from Nuclear. As soon as you're close enough to that Feather the storm puts you into an angle that three feathers are going to hit. You're basically dead against the Zaya, and there's not really any kind of response for it. And speaking of this Zaya, we talked a little bit about how H2K will have the late game. Uh, even coming from the AD carry as well, Nuclear opting for the Essence Reaver build uh, gives you a significant amount of damage in the late game. The cooldown on the, uh, the the E goes down to like eight seconds, so you can get multiple rotations within team fights. And then Feather Storm just bursts out every single fight. You get a whole bunch of feathers drawing back, but mid lane, oh, Vanda didn't quite connect. Yeah, his feathers were not flashy enough. However, it opens the door for Vitality to finally finish off the mid tier one. But that has been so long coming. We're approaching the 20 minute mm. mark. And Vitality are going to be able to back away in lane. H2K, you talked about them really gunning for this later game. And honestly, in the mid, it's not working too badly for them. They still have this gold lead. They still are holding firm. There's not a lot of Vitality been able to get. A lot of the reason why Vitality could push up onto the mid tower there, though, was the fact that H2K sent Feverman up to the top side, which they wanted to defend the top tower. It's understandable why you do that. They basically concede that mid tower is low health and it will eventually die. But Nuclear, without his flash, didn't want to go aggressive with the Featherstorm, didn't want to leave himself vulnerable for any kind of counter-engage. But meanwhile, Odo Amne already winning the side lane. This is the same thing again. Flashes through. This time, Noche was a little bit farther behind, but it doesn't really matter as H2K are still on the front side. You can see the Zaya took out the tower in the mid. Now Joko gets reposted. In goes uh, Yanko's infinite duress. I'm not sure that's the move you wanted, buddy, as he gets swallowed up by Jay, who flashed forward, spits him right back on out into the waiting arms of Yankos, who picks up that kill. 20 minutes on the board. I think Joko was trying to deny Yankos a kick opportunity because his flash was available, but I don't think he realized Yankos didn't have kick quite yet. It has just become available. Don't know whether that was Joko trying to escape and Yankos blocked it. I guess we'll end up getting a replay and uh, we can see in the slow motion exactly what Joko was looking for there. But again, another member of Vitality pushed out on the side lanes. Che comes in evens up the numbers, puts it in the favor of H2K, and it's another kill going over to H2K. Now, two towers died, one for each team during that. The mid tower of Vitality was taken by Feverman and Nuclear, and H2K lost their top tower to New Duck. So, uh, a little bit of extra gold for each team, a lot of that map now opening up, and honestly, that may still benefit H2K with these uh, Tom Kench plays. Yep. How many times is it gonna take Vitality dying before they realize we cannot be out on these side lanes. Well, at least one more. Thing. So, Joko's about to use that infinite duress. What is it that in fact helps? Oh, Yankos blocked it. That was beautiful. It was actually, I think he was following up on the Q, was able to block the infinite duress on the way out. Nice. Nice. That was stylish. Well, H2K definitely are doing it in style right now. Thousand and a half gold in the lead as we get to the 22 minute mark. Che hiding in the brushes as Choco throws down the ward. Won't get too much sight off of it. Thanks to the control that HDK have already placed. And they are looking to make moves inwards into this jungle of vitality. Nuke Duck still waiting on the bottom side to try and duel out against Odawamne. See if he's got what it takes to make it happen. He steps forward. He wants that red buff. Odawamne. Uh... I feel like could win an extended trade. As long as the chains miss on the first exchange, I'm pretty sure he will actually just 1v1 down Nuke Duck. Might be the case. Well, Joko, okay, buddy, is tanky enough to survive, but wandered a little bit too far out of range once again for his teammates to really get in time. Look at Yankos, the team player here. Lock it as Ryan Solari, second item on the lease in. We see uh, a couple of times that locket. He's just like, I'm just going to make sure the team survives through team fights. Don't don't want to go any of that solo carry build. Nah, he's going to leave that. Yang goes to, to the one we used to know. Uh, well, you know, he's had a long career himself, so yeah, it's always time to learn and try new things. <laughs> Odoamne and Nuclear are going to be covering that gap this game anyways. And let's not forget Febavin as the game goes on. And he's going to be harder, slipperier to kill as well now that he has the Banshee's Veil all yeah. completed. 
it's going to be difficult for Vitality, especially now that this Dragon is going to be finished up pretty easily. There's so much vision in the river for H2K. Vitality have been losing this War of Attrition slowly but surely. Yeah. And I like the play that uh, Vitality made onto the top side to get the first couple of kills of the game, as well as the 1v1 from Noob, though. Um, just being able to kind of outplay Feberman in the mid lane, but... From there, it, it's been the same kind of symptoms from Vitality where one member gets caught out and suddenly Vitality can't skirmish. And we looked at the amount of damage that their carries do the other day um, at the beginning of Thursday's show. There are so many fights that Vitality are outnumbered that they just never end up being able to do damage. But they might be able to get the numbers this time around. Oh, unless Joko goes down, and he does to start things off. Jay tanks up the rest of Vitality as Nuketuck gets in around the backside to try and finish the job onto Nuclear, who gets swallowed up by Che. Kabushard, meanwhile, trying to 1v1 out against Oda Wamne, but the Croc is gonna get rocked! Febivin with the finisher! And the ace in the hole goes straight into Febivin's health bar, but that's not going to be enough. Two kills for zero as Nuke Duck once again looks for an inroad, but there's nothing there. Yeah, a lot of little 1v1s happened during that exchange. Nuclear tried to face off against Nuke Duck, but in came Che to keep him alive. And of course, maybe uh, trying to put the, the Frighteners onto Nuke Duck in that mid lane. Push them away from Baron. Here comes Odoamne. Now keep in mind, H2K have got a good amount of damage to take down this Baron quickly. That they do, but Joko is back up if he can get there in time. No Vitality can heal wrestling. him off. Yes, you are correct. Baron has not always been H2K's friend, but will that change right here, right now? The Baron is smited away, and Nuke Duck cannot get the finishing kill onto anybody, and he's forced to burn Flash into enemy territory just to get out alive. Yeah, it was a Baron call with a bigger lead than this that H2K bundled or bungled I should say against the unicorns of love but well, bundled up the win for them first rated for Baron control this is because they didn't give away a Baron in like the <laughs> first two weeks of the split yeah you got um, you got to give yourself some uh, credit from earlier on in the split then you can afford to make a few mistakes so Joko tries to get Odo on they parry comes through and brilliant block on the infinite duress once again Joko not having any luck with his ultimate nuclear he has Flash, he has ult, doesn't choose to use him because Che is there to keep him alive. And then Odo Omni finds a Cabochard, is able to take him down. And on the bottom left part of your screen, we are seeing Nuka stalking Cab uh, Odo Omni, but... Yeah. Uh, look at where Che is. Uh, Che's ult is coming through. All right, Nuke Duck, he I, I got to give him credit for che trying over it. and over again, but he is so... He is always on the wrong side of the map at this point. Che cancelled his ult because he knew he could just run after Nuke Duck uh -oh. and find it. This uh, will not end well. One auto is all that Feverman needs. Just keeps on going. Whoa, Ooh. he wanted to flash for that one. <laughs> I thought we were going to be in for a long yeah, chase. Yeah, I thought we were in for a chase. I'm like, I'm just going to watch how this plays out. Not today, says Feverman. I mean, he's 3-1-2 and two at this point. So despite the fact that he was getting bullied in lane, it hasn't mattered much. And that is a big amount of gray health as Che unfortunately fails to flash over the wall, but Nuclear Ooh. does not follow through by Cabo Shard. Just like that, they got two kills. Yeah, Vitality fire back, catching out H2K when they were on their own, and Nuclear tried to come in to defend Che, then had to use his ultimate and flash over the wall because he can't cross walls just with the ultimate alone. And Nuclear and Che both die the first time in this game, H2K. Maybe a little rock. This will hold some of their presence from that Baron buff being taken. They did manage to get a tower on the bottom side as Odawamne had kind of hard committed, but it just seems like both teams have been giving up these isolated or semi-isolated kills. Yeah. And it's that's really just been the impetus for a lot of this action. So let's see how it all started as Che goes in. Oh, right in between two <laughs> with nobody in his belly. Yeah, Che orchestrated this play. That's a, a, I think Yankos, they thought maybe was coming across the mid lane, but Yankos was actually chasing Vanda. Then Nuclear had to use the flash to get over the wall. Double kill for Cabo. Oh, that could have been a lot worse. At least Odoamne got a tower out of it. Yeah. Yeah, Odoamne has full control of the side lanes. Oh, he's going to need it, though. There's four Vitality members. Yeah, one versus one. Nobody oh, can got really him. deal with this Fiora, but he has got Baron, but... And he's got a ward, so he saw them coming. Meanwhile, HDK have got four on mid, and Nuke Duck sitting there to defend. Yankos trying to clear some vision away himself, and now Yankos got the command to protect on with Baron buff intact on a few members still. HDK are looking to try and finish off the second tier tower. Odoamne is going to have better luck up top. It's the 4-1 for H2K. Che's ult is back available again. Oh, man. He gets the knockup, and now they've chosen Yankos and finish him off. It's Nuke Duck finally breaking out of the game with a kill right here. Ace the hole going to land onto Che. 
Finally, Joko manages to find somebody with the ultimate without it getting blocked. And Yankos ends up falling. It will, once again, delay any more impact. Baron Buff has just expired for H2K. So now they're just going to have to use the gold lead that they've accrued already. Just about 4,000. They are strong enough in the side lane with Odo Omni, but he doesn't have teleport for another few seconds. And that means he can't reliably be out on that side lane, especially not when Yankos is still dead. It seems like the game plan for HK really allows for this. They've been giving up a kill here and there, but they're still getting towers. Odawane has been a monster side pusher. He's 3-1-3, three, and, three, and as you said earlier, no one of Vitality can deal with him. They need to send multiple members at that point. And it's just going to get worse and worse as Fiora is going to get stronger. Sitting on the Trinity Force, a Ravenous Hydra. Difficult for anyone from Vitality to find him. Although Nuketuck has been trying. And <laughs> Nuketuck has been trying, and it, it's important to note that Steelback is the best farmed person in this game. Um, we've given him uh, a little bit of uh, emphasis on how low his damage has been. Well, it's difficult when you get past four items on Caitlyn not to deal a lot of damage. So as long as Steelback can stay alive, once he's got his next item completed, Static Shiv Rapid Fire Cannon has already been finished. If H2K don't find their way into the backline, Steelback should be able to have a considerable impact. Problem is, Orianna, Fiora, and a late game building Zaya make it very difficult for one member to out damage the three. Yeah, Nuke Duck has not really been able to do enough on his own to really kind of keep that at bay. And Kabushard, even though he did get a couple of kills in the early stages of the game, that's not going to be a damage threat the longer it goes on. He's going to need to keep getting tanky. You see the Sterix gauge completed on him as well. It seems like they're just going to need to find like almost a perfect angle to get like a pick so the fight yeah. just instantly becomes a 5v4. And HCK have shown that they're not immune to getting picked off in a bad situation, but we'll see if that holds true as Joko looks to go in onto Nuclear, backs uh, off. Nuclear didn't quite get the angle on the feathers there. The third one didn't quite cross through Joko. It uh, can be tricky. HUK are going to try and make a play onto the top side as Oduwane tries to get out. He could be in trouble. He's speedy, but is he going to be fast enough? He does have Guardian Angel. He's got Flash too. That was a lot of movement by Vitality to try and get on to Oduwane. And there are no mini waves in the mid, but HUK have taken up an advanced position to try and push this. They might just be able to do it. Yeah, they're going to have the wave soon. Vitality having to recall, so that's going to be a tower going over to H2K. For all of that investment on the bottom side. Keep in mind, Odomne's teleport is available. So is Nuketuck, but Nuketuck has no flash right now, so he has to kind of run away from this fight quick. Vitality is going to try and box in H2K in the jungle, but remember, Odomne is not too far away. Yeah, Joko's going in, but the rest of H2K, they're kind of holding the line right now, but in comes Cabo Shard. Yankos, he's trying to get out of there, and meanwhile, the rest Ooh. of the team has arrived to steal back. We'll clean up the jungler. Nuketuck coming in around the backside, manages to get an explosion onto Nuclear, but Febivan picks up steal back. It is a bloodbath, and the smoke clears. Two for two. H 2K though with a massive feather storm stun through the majority of that fight made it better than it should have been because Vitality was starting to become uh, put themselves in a lethal position when it comes to H2K. But now H2K, remember, GA is still on this Fiora. They're gonna try and rush down the tower quickly and maybe back away after it. Okay, Shay preemptively swallows up Tuckman. They're gonna get themselves the tower. Now they feel like they can keep on going. Odawane is just massive. And now the inhibitor down to half its health. Joko, Vander, Nuke Duck all trying desperately to defend. But it will be all for naught. And HDK can walk away with their prize. Vitality recognizing exactly what happened to Splice when it came to this Fiora being played up against them. And this time, Odoamne, 4-1-4, not quite the eight kills that uh, they just scored up against Splice. But look at this. Okay, the engage goes on to Yankos. They take a lot of his health up. And Vitality is starting to close in. Che is able to keep Yankos alive for a little while longer. But look at this three-person stun that comes through. Right the way through the fight, and it denies Steelback being able to uh, have Vitality peel for him. And again, it's another fight where Steelback dies, and nobody is around to keep him alive. There was a significant amount of damage on Vitality, and that was with Steelback getting picked off to end the fight. Yeah. I mean, honestly, the setup couldn't have been that much better because Vander landed a multi-man knockup. Uh, didn't manage to get the quickness to taunt anybody up, but it didn't matter because then Kabushar comes around the back. Joko was holding on to them. And then it just kind of fell apart a little bit because H2K kind of condensed themselves uh, into this giant mass of absorbing all that damage before turning it back around.
H2K have started to not necessarily slow down. They did, of course, just get that inhibitor. But it started to look a little messier out of uh, H2K for the last couple of minutes. Still heavily ahead. Che wants to go aggressive, take a nuclear with him this time. Oh, that's actually was right oh, into boy. the backfire. Oh, boy. Uh, can he stay alive? He gets charmed up for just a second, but they are right. going to try to keep turning at the shockwave of Holy and Benny, but they have lost their AD carry. A pair of redemptions come down. I don't know if anyone's going to be redeemed after this one, but H2K got enough in the tank, and that Fiora's running wild. Febivin's helping out as well, and hits the last man standing, Nuke Duck, as H2K look to close this out. <laughs> Just delivered Nuke Duck as a sacrificial lamb to Vitality to win game one. Well, I suppose Nuclear might have been the one going down, the odd man out, as you would say, but Oda Wamne is certainly making these odds pretty darn even as the Nexus is going to fall, and 34 minutes in, H2K are going to take a 1 0 lead in the series. Nuclear was laughing about that. <laughs> Nuclear, like, had his arms in the air cheering on his team. He's like, yeah, deliver me into the team. I'll soak up everything as an AD carry. I love that attitude from an AD carry, by the <laughs> way, because you don't get that all the time, especially from guys like Steelback. No, no, go in. I want to see this guy in like a jinx or something. That was great. HUK knowing like, okay, all we got to do is kill him in the fight and we won the game. <laughs> Everything's fine. Send in the AD carry. Yep, yep. Well, I mean, he goes in and he instantly gets <laughs> charmed by Rakan, which is thematically appropriate, I suppose. Uh, but then, yeah, the rest of the team's like, oh, we have damage. <laughs> yeah. Oduamne shows up, helps uh, carry the rest of the fight with Febovin and HUK. Uh, the game started out in favor of Vitality. But Vitality, it just all starts falling apart when they drip kills over to their opponents. And you got to look at it. Tom Kench, worth banning. Fiora, Fiora maybe. worth banning. Still undefeated. Yeah, I mean, there was so much jungle emphasis by both teams that you can't really fault Vitality for, for taking away the Zac, the Elise, and the Thresh. But then you look at how H2K play around the Fiora, the Tom Kench. I think for them, those figs are maybe even stronger than a, an Elise, yeah. maybe a Thresh. I mean, banning out so many junglers is a double-edged sword. And if you're going to do it, you should make sure your pool is larger than your opponent's. Kind of hard <laughs> to do against Yankos. All right, well, H2K, they got off to a good start in the series. We're going to go ahead and check in our analysts for a closer look. Thank you very much, Pyra. An explosive game one for sure. Very back and forth there for a little while. And as we get a chance to look at picks and bans, I want to talk a little bit about these solo lane matchups. Uh, specifically, looking at the top lane here, Wadid, it felt like Renekton just dominated this Fjord early on. And, and maybe some mistakes from Oda Wamne in the early laning phase? Mm, you have to really care about the Renekton only trades because uh, if you trade a lot with Renekton, after that, Renekton just life still with his Q and then. He get a lot of advantage from that, and that means they can vision control with that uh, pressure. So you have to really care about that. Maybe he, he just want to kill Kabuchard and then he trades a lot. That's the point, I think. <laughs> I actually think Kabuchard played this matchup really well as well because he uh, played around the pressure ex um, extremely well, and he he really put it down onto Odo Omni, nearly getting a solo kill in some instances. Well, if it wasn't for a bit of jungle pressure, uh, it could have been very one-sided. And very <laughs> jungle pressure coming in from Joko as we bring up our first replay. Uh, Got to keep your eyes on exactly how the things unfold here. This is, of course, the first blood in the mid lane. Brief moment of disrespect from Nuke Duck that does give Vitality an early advantage. It just goes straight into this fantastic topside play from Cabo. Yeah, I think it's uh, worth highlighting here that H2K, I think it was a little bit greedy to try and go for that play. They thought that maybe they could get a shutdown onto Cabo because he's super overextended on this Renekton, but Joko spent a lot of his early game just sitting around the top half of the map, enabling Cabo to continue playing the way in which he did. Uh, and I think that Vitality respected what H2K were trying to do, which was snowball that Fiora and try and get her out of what was a rough early matchup. But in terms of the early game, in terms of the top and mid anyway, things were going heavily in favor of Vitality, not quite the same down the bottom lane. Yeah, let's take a chance to talk about the bot lane matchup now. Wadid, what are your thoughts on the Caitlyn Tom Kench versus these, uh, not the Caitlyn Tom Kench, rather the Rikon. Zaya Tom Kench versus the Recon Caitlyn on the opposite side? How do you expect this lane to sort of play out here? Yeah, because this is only ch one chance to HTK because uh, they lo have a losing matchup on the top side and mid, right? But uh, they used their Tom Kench ulti really well. That was the key point of the. The win and then like basically uh, the Caitlyn have an early pressure on both sides but uh, they failed the level one that's the point and then Tom Kench have pressure also and the Tom Kench can move a lot with his ulti that means silent pressure is whatever Tom Kench can move man advantage yeah I think 
Teja's uh, shot caller is, is insane. It was like a lot of insane play, I think. He yeah. just did really well. It looked really good from the overall, and even in the early landing phase where we kind of expected Kaylin to be successful, it seems like it wasn't so good from Vitality. So is this Che just being really, really, really good, or is this uh, kind of a little bit of failure on the side of Vitality? I think if you play against Tom Catch, they have to communication really a lot, but maybe they did mistake because they have a winning matchup on side lane, right? So they want to pressure on side lane, but maybe they forget about the Tom Catch because Che on Tom Catch, like... It's insane. Like he can just move globally, and then they can just have a man advantage. You know, like more than a twisted fate. So, if you play against Tom Catch, if you lose matchup, and then if you're losing uh, at the lane, you have to really respect about the Tom Catch ulti. And I also think it's worth highlighting that uh, something that we were talking about during the game was that in order to play around Tom Catch, you have to have really good communication, right? You need to be discussing that. If you uh, know exactly what's going on in the map and where the pressure is being exerted, you can look to expect where that Tom Kent play is going to be happening from. And earlier in the day, we saw Rocket adapt because even though that Tom Kent was shutting down Faxi, they were able to get mid lane priority. They were able to trade towers for losing kills down in the bottom. What we saw from Vitality was they were not doing that. They were always losing a member and they were the ones to lose objectives because H2K had good control over both mid and the side lanes in order to make sure that Vitality could couldn't punish them. And it was kind of tough to watch because for so much of the early game, uh, Vitality was in control, but H2K were able to take it back. And as we look at uh, one of these fights that occurred pretty close to the end of the game, you can see Vitality maybe not respecting the snowball potential of some of these picks on the side of H2K. You can see the Vitality, they actually tried to set up a flank, but um, something that you were saying we did was that the communication didn't quite seem on point for Vitality. Yeah, Renekton and LeBlanc was uh, strong at this comp, but they, they just go engage a bit uh, really early, so they fail the collapse, and they just they have Zyra, right? So that, that means that you have to really care about the, his passive, but they he failed the uh, they failed to dodge it. So yeah, if you want to collapse it, they, you have to communication really a lot. Yeah, communication again, but <laughs> yeah, it was a bit uh, close for uh, Vitality. If they collapse correctly, it was gonna be like big win for Vitality. Definitely could have been. So I'm curious, would you looking ahead to the next game, if you're playing for Vitality, what do you think is something that has to change? Is it just communication in game? Is it the draft? What, what would you want to see them change? Uh, I think uh, everything was fine, but uh, the one point, if you play Caitlyn, you have to pressure on ball lane all the game. But actually, they, uh, I think they failed at the level one really hard. So they have to really care about the early level on both side trade. And for H2K, I think I want them to be a little bit more respectful because twice we did see Zaya get baited in a little bit by Che where they go into a fight and then Zaya has to end up losing their <laughs> life. And it's almost like that, hey, if you have a Galio, then that kind of engage makes a lot of sense. And Galio did make it through the draft, so... Maybe if you want to make those kind of a plays, you look to try and pick up the Galio. But, but then you don't have a Fior or an Oriana, and, I, it, and the Fior was pretty clutch, and the Oriana <laughs> felt like it had good. a few moments. Good. But maybe we'll see some changes on the side of H2K. Either way, H2K struck first, but can Vitality respond with a win? Well, we'll find out, because game two is right around the corner. See how it ends up.